In an era with more shooting than ever, where teams play lineups without any big men, the Minnesota Timberwolves have built their team around two centers. They traded five players and a treasure chest of picks for the sartorial Rudy Gobert, a defensive specialist, to pair with Carl Anthony Towns, an offensive specialist. And after winning 46 games last year, the Wolves have been about a 500 team this season with just an average defense. That might surprise you because Minnesota had a slightly above average defense last year before Gobert and Rudy almost single-handedly turned Utah into a top five defensive unit every season. So why hasn't that happened in Minnesota? We've discussed the playoff limitations of Gobert's style in the last few years on this channel, where switch hunting and tons of three-point shooting can limit Rudy's rim-protecting value. But that actually hasn't been the problem. When Gobert defends the pick and roll, the Wolves have a mind-boggling 85 defensive rating this year, his lowest since 2015. They've been even better when he's in his preferred drop coverage, sagging back into the paint like this. So this part of the experiment has translated well. Gobert typically guards a non-shooter so he can stay close to the hoop while Towns takes the biggest remaining player. And they switch this one to keep Rudy closer to the basket. Towns can defend a non-threat out there. So the play just fizzles into a side pick and roll where Gobert is at his best walling off the paint, and that ends up in a low percentage shot. It's common today for a third offensive player to be part of the pick and roll, and the Wolves will switch perimeter defenders while keeping Gobert dropped back. And Jaden McDaniels does a good job of pushing the shooter inside the three-point line for a mediocre long two. McDaniels has been excellent as a point of attack defender this season, navigating screens well and using his length to bother shooters. And that screen navigation is key with Gobert. Because Rudy's sagged back, McDaniels needs to stay connected to the shooters so they can't walk into their shooting pocket for a pull-up three. And then he uses the length to disrupt it from behind. This one's against a bigger, stronger LeBron James, and he's glued to him around the pick, then stays with a few bumps to contest it well at the rim. So McDaniels is already a really good on-ball defender. Check out the slide toward the ball, then the closeout to the shooter, and he swivels his hips like a top to stay with the Ja Morant drive, and that is insane. Meanwhile, Anthony Edwards also has the physical tools to pressure the point of attack like this and make it around screens, although he's inconsistent in this area, stuck on this one a little, and that makes Gobert's drop vulnerable to pull up three-point shooters. Remember, last year with Towns at center, Minnesota did not play a drop, instead bringing Cat to the level of the screen to momentarily double and contain the ball. That meant the other three defenders had to scramble behind him and coordinate their rotations until he recovered back into the play. This year, it's the old scheme when Gobert's on the bench, with Towns coming out high to meet the ball, then defenders rotating while he recovers back into position. But with Gobert off the court, that defensive scheme has been a touch weaker this season with a newcomer like Kyle Anderson, aptly nicknamed Slow Mo, compared to the rangy Jared Vanderbilt, who was a perfect partner reading rotations behind the play after Towns jumped the ball. Some of this is also just Cat struggling with his focus at times. He realizes his man isn't setting a screen, so he follows him into the corner, but stops looking at the play for a while and misses his rotation. And these scrambling rotations are trickier with two centers out there. So Towns jumps out on the ball handler, Gobert rotates out to his man, and they do a pretty good job of recovering on this one. But with less speed on the floor, errors compound. McDaniels has a brief lapse ball watching, and it's not like Gobert is looking to sprint out to make that next rotation to a shooter. Take a play like this one, 
where D'Angelo Russell gets stuck on a screen or moving screen or whatever that is. Gobert switches onto a wing. So Chris Paul says to bring Rudy back into the pick and roll again. And now Gobert's in his drop, trying to keep the ball and his man in front of him. Russell's pushing Paul downhill and recovering, but he just stops and forgets about Paul. And it's hard for Towns to slide over and help because he's not that agile. You might think these big men struggle switching onto smaller, quicker players, but they've actually been just fine in that department. Cat hangs with Devin Booker until Gobert comes over to alter the shot. The bigger issue they have in these spots is they can't play the same coverages. Cat switches more when Gobert is behind him, and this is a nice play that exposes Gobert staying in the paint. On this one, Town switches the first screen, then they put both centers in the pick and roll, and Rudy can't really sag way off because it's hard for Cat to chase a guard around a screen, so he lingers up top and they'll probably live with a long three there. All these different coverages can lead to miscommunications. This should just be a guard to guard switch, but Bryn Forbes gets his wires crossed, so Gobert has to slide down and then make an impossible rotation to the corner just to avoid the three, but that opens up a drive with no shot blocker in the paint. This happened multiple times in an early season game against Utah, where again, Anthony Edwards should be switching this. Maybe he thinks the big man is going to hedge out toward the ball, but that's not Gobert's coverage, and it's just a brain cramp from Ant and a huge three in the corner. This is part of Edwards' inconsistency on this end of the floor, where he can have really strong possessions like this chasing his man or guarding the point of attack around screens, but then have lapses in awareness that are crucial. If Towns is out high on the other side of the screen, Ant cannot let True Holiday cross back left because there's no one there to meet him, and that just turns into a total defensive disaster. And this happens a little too much for my liking. There's no reason at all to angle his body like this with Towns in his usual coverage, unless Edwards forgot the coverage or there was a major miscommunication between them, and those errors often lead to layups. These communication issues are compounded in transition. Gobert is calling out players and says, someone pick up the wing, but neither Cat nor McDaniels get the memo, and it's a wide open three. And you can see Cat's frustration here. Again, this could just be both him and Gobert being accustomed to sprinting to the paint like centers. It's a similar story here. This is off a make, and Gobert and big man Nas Reed are in the paint, two guards pick up Giannis and Rudy thinks I'm the backstop here but Nas apparently thinks that Rudy's going to chase this cutting big man out to the three-point line oof the Wolves have actually held up okay in transition statistically but another component of these double big lineups is their speed or lack thereof Russell is a slow-footed guard And you can see on a play like this with him, Gobert, and Towns all out there, how Utah is just faster down the floor, leading to easy offense. When the Wolves swap out Russell or either of their starting big men, they're actually quite quick to jump the ball and then scramble behind the play in unison. Here's their pick and roll coverage with Towns. He hedges out to the ball, is a touch slow turning and recovering, so Torian Prince hangs out in the paint for way too long while Cat gets back and no one ever rotates to the corner. Ugh. Compare that to Nas Reed in the same coverage and notice he's already starting to recover after he feels the ball is contained and McDaniels has recovered. So now the backside helper is itching to rotate and he flies to the corner on the pass and completely resets the play. The Wolves actually give up the most wide open threes per game right now, per second spectrum, and they're also near the bottom of the league in defensive rebounding percentage, both symptoms of rotational breakdowns upstream in a possession. But even with all that said, they're still in the 80th percentile in defensive rating with Gobert on the court and they can shore up some of these communication issues with experience. 
Their bigger issue is probably the fit with Towns, because he and Rudy are both one-way centers. Someone like Jared Vanderbilt probably protected Cat's weaknesses more than Gobert does, and Cat's offensive strengths don't really optimize Rudy on that end. So, yes, Minnesota can improve, but I think for this group to really level up, they'll probably need a schematic adjustment like last year's Celtics. They were able to keep Rob Williams closer to the hoop, but in this case, Cat doesn't have Al Horford's versatility on the outside. On the offensive end, Russell has also been in a shooting slump, so there's reason to believe they can improve there too. Either way, Minnesota's big bet here is that Gobert gives them an elite defense or keeps their defense afloat around offensive talent like Cat and Russell. But a month into the season, neither of those outcomes has really panned out. We're producing a ton of extra content this year. First at patreon.com slash thinking basketball, where you can find companion videos. And second on the NBA app, where the latest video is on Jason Tatum's finishing. Additionally, we've launched our new website with player and team leaderboards that update throughout the year. So subscribers can access many of the stats referenced in these videos. Thanks as always for watching this one. Let me know what you think of this wildly fascinating experiment down below. And I do hope you are having a great day.